Welcome back to Success with Steven. My name is Steven Smith. On this channel, we talk about finance, credit, business credit, or business strategy overall. Today, we're going to be talking about the top three banks that approve a new business for 50K. Now, on this list, it's going to be banks that actually approve you for more than 50K or in combination. It is well over that. But um, if you were to get one of these, I would say this is like a, a general medium for these top three banks. Um, for these top three banks, all of them in this list will require a personal guarantee. But before I even get started, I want to say that the next video that I make. So if you're watching this two days from now, you'll probably be seeing a video about um, the Sam's Club Business MasterCard. Now, that's going to be the only credit card that I know of that you really do not need a personal guarantee for and that you can get with a new business. It just has to be structured properly. So even though all the cards on this list require a personal guarantee for my people who are currently in the process of rebuilding credit, just know that card will apply to you and you will be able to get that credit card. All right. So just uh, just keep that in mind that later on um, there will be a video to address that. So the, the first thing I want to go over again, a personal guarantee. Now, I believe that having your business structured is very, very, very important, especially when you get into year two. You've had like two tax returns and you're looking at getting actual business loans, not just um, credit cards. When you're looking at doing things like commercial property. That's where having a business structured uh, will come into play when it comes to getting credit cards. Most of the time, you really don't need to have a structured business except the Sam's Club Business MasterCard for that one you do. Uh, other than that, for most credit cards, as long as you have a business that's been operating, uh, honestly, even within like honestly it could be a brand new business but let's just say like 30 days just to establish your business profile um for the irs to recognize that federal tax id 30 days i would say um you can get a business credit card by personally guaranteeing it because everything on a business credit card application is going to be stated income the rest of it um is going to be uh, based on your credit worthiness and the reason why you're able to get that card and you're able to get high limits is because the banks will trust you because they can personally guarantee that you're going to be held responsible for that card if anything were to happen. And that's the reason why you're able to get these credit card accounts and these high limits with no documentation, even if you can't prove that your business is making money or has made money in the past. So with that being said, no matter how well your business is structured, especially for a majority of credit cards, again, with the exception of when we get into business loans later down the line, commercial property, and when we talk about the Sam's Club Business MasterCard, no matter how well it's structured, a personal guarantee will be required to obtain the credit cards that are on this list. And you'll want to have at least a credit score of 680 or above no derogatory marks and be using less than 10% of utilization. There are a couple of other credit cards I do want to mention that don't require a personal guarantee, but a lot of those that don't require you to have 90 days worth of bank statements where you have a hundred thousand dollars or somewhere around that in the bank. I know a couple like that, which kind of defeats the purpose. If you had that much capital, then you probably wouldn't be looking to get these cards in the first place. So I did want to make note of that, but this is going to be important. But excuse me, as you guys know, I have plenty of videos that talk about uh, credit repair, that talk about uh, removing charge off collections, late payments. So there's plenty of material that you can get from this channel that's going to aid you in getting to that great credit score that can enable you to get these cards. And again, I have something for everyone else in the next video where you can get a business credit card with no personal guarantee. And I believe the limit on that one goes up to around uh, $25,000. Now some application tips. You always want to add your projected revenue. I've had some people ask me about that on one-on-one -on -one coachings. 
90% of business applications are stated income. All right. There, they're going to ask you what you project to make. There's no documentation needed. Even if you have a brand new business, you want to add what you project to make. I wouldn't exaggerate it. I would keep your projection within reason. And here's an example. If you're in marketing consulting and the average marketing consultant in your state makes, let's say, $100,000 per year, it's not far fetched to use that as a projection. So based off of your business industry, based off of what you're doing, you can make an educated projection that you may net this within the first year. You have to understand that a lot of these uh, business credit cards are geared towards startups, which means you're using them in order to kickstart your business so you can um, begin to operate. Right. Because a lot of times we need to have funding to start to even make money to then pay back the banks. So um, don't ever put zero if you know, don't put zero unless I, I, I guess you're. Yeah, I, I just wouldn't put zero really. And I can't even think of a scenario where that would make sense. Always put the projection. They're also going to ask you for your personal income as well. And it's going to be a combination of the two. Don't over exaggerate what you make or you can get into a situation where it was supposed to be a no doc. But because it's been so grossly exaggerated, they might ask you for documentation. So don't exaggerate. Do it within reason but give a projection based off of statistics that you can back up and you can prove this would make sense for this industry because a lot of the things in applications are based off of analytics of other people in the same industry. First card on this list is going to be American Express. I put the gold one here, but most people are going for the American Express blue. A uh, reason being that one has 0% APR for 12 months and um, on those cards, I'm going to get to that one eventually. I'm saving that one for when I want to use it. You guys want to be strategic about the cards that you're getting. Um, if you have 0% APR for 12 months, you need to have a plan from day one. You wouldn't want to waste that time. 0% APR simply meaning you don't have to pay interest on that card for 12 months. So if you were going to make a large purchase, you can then um, pay that off slowly over the course of a year. So you definitely want to use those strategically. For my first one, I got the American Express Business Gold. And here are some data points. You want to have at least a 680 plus credit score. I would say two hard inquiries or less. Charge cards. There's different types of the American Express. There's charge cards. They're revolving. Charge cards have no limit. So I really couldn't tell you what the limit was because it's flexible. But what I can say is my spending power that I've been approved to spend in one single transaction is up to 50,000. So for all intents and purposes, for now, I would say that my limit on this card, if I had to set one, is around 50,000 because, again, this is a charge card. Now, there's also a feature on American Express, even though charge cards are supposed to be paid in full. There's a feature called pay over time. Now, pay over time is just weird because I would just say it's the same thing as a revolving account. But for the car that I have, I can pay 70 up to seventy two thousand dollars over time. But of course, that would be with interest and you probably wouldn't want to carry over a balance that high. But again, that's the reason why you'd be looking at the uh, the other two cards, the American Express blue cards. Most people go for those um, because they have that. 0% APR for 12 months. And eventually we're going to get there. I'm going to get that as well. I just have a purpose for it and I don't need it right now. So when I do need it, it'll be there. It'll be waiting for me and I'll be able to build some rapport with American Express in the meantime by using this card responsibly. Now, uh, another thing I would I would recommend if your score is a 680 if you could get a personal card with them and build a relationship, that would help very, very much uh, from some other data points that I've seen. Um, if you if you have any other American Express products, like, for example, the high yield savings, that also helps. Um, they're more friendly when it comes to you not having any other product with them yet. But if you're 
lower than if you're sub 700, 680 range, or maybe you're trying to apply with a 670 somewhere in that ballpark. If you have something with them, I would get something. Even if you opened up a high yield savings and just put like $500 in it, I would look at just doing a little something with them um, and you may get in a higher a higher limit or an approval. Another great thing about this card is that they pre-approve you uh, before you take a hard inquiry. This credit card pulls from Experian. Um, so uh, if you if you have a strong experience score, I would focus on that. I have seen uh, some information online where there is a dual pool where it can pull from TransUnion as well, depending on your state. But in order for you to avoid that, you can just freeze your TransUnion credit score and then you'll only take just the one if that were to occur. Um, the next one that we're looking at is the American um, Express Business Prime. Now, this card, I'm just choosing this one because I have this card. Um, I did get both of these cards within the course of, I want to say, five days. At least I applied within that time. Now, this one is a revolving card. The previous one was a charge card. There's no spin limit. It's flexible. This one is a revolving card with a limit. The limit was 12,000. Now, um, Chase, I'm sorry, not Chase. American Express has a one in five rule. When you're getting a charge card and a revolving card, the one in five rule does not apply. The one in five rule is within five days, you can only apply for one American Express. But in actuality, you can apply for a charge and a revolving in the same day. So you can technically get two within the same day as long as they're uh, as long as they're not the same type. All right. Um, and this doesn't apply. So you can get two in the exact same day. Uh, data points, at least, again, a 680 plus credit score. Uh, no more than two hard inquiries. And uh, you can get approved for both cards in the same day. This is just the initial credit limit in 90 days. Of course, we'll be looking to raise that. But if you're looking at just this card by itself and you're looking at the American Express Gold, just between those two, that's around sixty two thousand dollars that you'll have access to in spending. Now, uh, with this one as well, there is no zero percent APR. So these aren't the two American Express cards I would recommend, but I would recommend both of the American Express Blues. Those have 0% APR. If you're looking at making a large purchase, you can get one charge or revolving. You could use both of those, hopefully get up to around what I've seen on average, 10 to 20, uh, 10, 25,000, sometimes more 40. If you could get, I mean, about 40,000 between both of those cards, that's $80,000 with just American Express alone, especially if you have 0% APR. Um, but again, make sure you're being strategic. You don't want to grab five zero percent APR cards at one time that you can't utilize all at one time. And now you've you know, you've taken up all of your good promotions where you could have taken one, used it for a year, paid that one off, got another one, used it for a year, paid that one off. Use them strategically to where this actually makes make sense for you. OK, uh, there's a website that I want to mention or the website is actually called creditboards.com, but it uses a credit pool database. And I'm just going to go there really quick. You would go here if you wanted to check um, credit pools and where they pull from. So, for example, if I were to put in American Express and search for credit pools. So as you can see here, it's going to tell you exactly which car that you're looking at, like the Marriott Bonvoy business. And you can check the records and you can see exactly where this car actually pulled from. So right now it tells you that the credit card was pulled from Experian. It was approved. They had a 748 credit score and the credit limit was 30,000. All right. So uh, again, I'll put that in the description. This is a really good resource. I use it all the time. Uh, there is a section where you can actually add your state as well. So right here. You can go ahead, choose your state. You can even click the credit reporting agency. You can pick the date that it was applied. You can put the 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 bank that you want to look at. So this is a really good resource because sometimes, depending on your state, you may have different pools. Like I said, from uh, American Express, normally it is Experian, but I have seen 
where double pulls happen, where it could be Experian and TransUnion, just varies by where you are. But with this, you know, definitely check this out. Great resource. I use it all the time. Next bank that we're looking at is going to be Chase. Now, Chase has various business credit cards that you can take a look at. Um, I have other videos where I talk about the specific details of the card, so I'm not going to get into that to into that today. But the average starting limit that I saw on this card was usually anywhere between. Um, I mean, I've seen as low as three thousand, but I've seen as high as twenty thousand, twenty five thousand when you initially get this card. Now I was weary of putting the card on this list because I wanted to put my personal opinion. But that aside, looking at the consensus for the majority of th that I've seen, like if you use the resource that we were just looking at, average 12K to 20K is what I kept seeing. My starting limit was 1,100. I do believe that I received that starting limit for a couple of different reasons. One, you want to open a bank account with Chase first. I did not open a bank account with them. Uh, when I uh, started, I just applied straight for the card. Open a business bank account with at least $500 to $1,000. Even if you did this the same day you applied, from what I've seen, it greatly increases your chances of getting a high limit, greatly increases that chance. So you definitely want to open a bank account with them, $500 to $1,000, all right? And your average starting limit for people who just do this one thing would be 12 to 20 K chase is really big on relationships. They like, if you have a personal card with them. So if you have them for your personal bank, if you have a personal credit card with them, this is just going to greatly increase the chances of getting us really high limit off the bat. Now for me, since I started off with this low limit, I would recommend that if this were to happen to you, don't apply for any more cards with them establish a relationship with them first use it responsibly for 90 days to six months and then for your next one you can go ahead and do that my plan with this one i already called tried to do a credit limit increase i wasn't able to they said the account was too new if you get this card and you have a low limit before you activate the card give them a call and then try to get your limit increased. I activated it first and then tried afterwards. Don't do that. Call first before you activate it and then see if they can increase the limit, okay? Um, other than that, the great thing is they have a two and 30 rule. So you can actually get two cards in a 30 day period. Uh, Chase has that uh, 524 rule, I believe. It doesn't apply to the business credit card. So you don't have to worry about that. It um, You can get two of these in a month. Um, and if you got two cards with a 20K limit, like if you got the business bank account, be some deposits in there. Maybe you did it for, if you want to wait some time and do it for like 90 days uh, while you're waiting um, to, you know, build that relationship. Good chance that you can get between 12. Could be, I've, I've seen you know, 25K and higher, but let's just say 12 to 20K for an average medium, you can get $40,000 between two Chase cards in the same day. All right. I mean, so if you have these two and then you also have the American Express that already puts you well above 50K, I mean, uh, but you know, this is like a, a bank that you could get 50K with in like one day. Same thing with American Express. I can attest to, to that American Express 50K basically within a week uh chase didn't have the same experience but if we're talking about the consensus of the field what i've been researching for a lot of people that made sure that they built that relationship that opened that account first that did everything the right way they were able to get this another thing uh an another uh warning when i initially got this card i did a i had a freeze on my experian credit score they pulled from experian I forgot to remove the freeze. When I did that, I waited a week. I called. When I called, I had to go through a whole process to get the card. That's another reason why I think my limit is so low. One, I didn't have a relationship. Two, I think it raised a, a maybe like a risk flag because they couldn't verify who I was or if I intended to actually do that application. And then I waited an entire week before I actually spoke with them and then, you know, complete the application. So, 
it may have been some type of like risk assessment where they were like, eh, we'll just start them off with this little limit first and then we'll see what happens because they were unsure the way that that happened. So <laughs> make sure it's not frozen. They pull from Experian, open up a bank account with them first, a business bank account, make a little deposit. And even if it's the same day, do that, then apply. It'll probably yield better results. Again, average about uh, 12 to 20 K and this particular card, uh, was 0% APR, the business cash, but there's also other chase cards that have 0% APR for the purpose that I'm going to use this card for. It didn't really matter if the limit was low or it wasn't. I'm okay with that. Um, for now. And as the, you know, next few months goes by 90 days, I'll try a limit increase 60 days. I'll do another one. And then after that, I may look at getting another Chase product um, after building a relationship with them for a good amount of time. Now, the last card on this list is a card that I have not gotten yet, but I am waiting to actually get. Um, and I'm glad I waited because now I'm I'm learning uh, from the previous experience with Chase how I should go about uh, getting this card. So the Bank of America business credit card. They have a couple of different ones. They have the cash rewards. They have the travel rewards. Um, you can look at it and get the one that you think would best suit your needs. For this particular credit card, they do have 0% APR for the first nine billing cycles. All right. You want to make sure you open a business bank account with them, 500 to $1,000. All right. Um, and then I would look at getting that card if you could even wait maybe 90 days to kind of deposit some money into that account, just build a good relationship with them, then I would. But you could actually get two of these cards in the same day and they pull from TransUnion. And again, you can use that website just to make sure that you double check from a majority of what I've seen. It's TransUnion. You can always double check, see your state, go to that website and you can get an average of what every of what everyone in your state that gets this particular credit card is getting. So definitely utilize that information to your advantage. But the average that I've seen with this one is between 10 and 15 K. Now, one other great thing about this card from what I've seen, you could actually get three cards within uh, one within one pool. So you could get three of these cards the business uh, advantage, the travel, and then maybe like an affinity card. I saw that, that, that they had a few. Um, but from what I was seeing, when you do get that card, the third one, the limit is usually fairly low, but you can do it. It is possible. I would say between um, getting like three of these for what you have on average between 10 and 15,000, if you were to get three, then you could probably get somewhere between uh, 35,000 to potentially on the high end, like the high, high end, 50,000. So I'll give you the average here, but this is definitely a contender that will give you $50,000 with no docs for your new business. Um, just, of course, you want to build that relationship first. So if you're in the process of credit, of, uh, of rebuilding credit or um, you're fixing your credit, it might be a good time to maybe open a bank account with uh, Bank of America, to open an account with Chase, a business one if you have a business, and maybe start doing small deposits into the account of like $25. Like open a business bank account, open a savings account as well. I, I wanna make sure that I add that. Checking and savings, business bank account, small deposits, and if you wanna start now, that would be you know really great because that would start to look really, really, really good. Every bank, has an internal banking score and they base that upon uh, how many products and services you have with them and then how often are you depositing money do you have a direct deposit or how often transact or how often the deposits are going into the account all of that will help even if it's small deposits it doesn't have to be large amounts large sums of money $25 uh, two times a week doing $50 uh, you know, a month for the next three, four months will go a long way. So consider doing that for uh, Bank of America. Consider doing that for Chase. I see that it's not as required with uh, American Express as most of their products are geared towards their credit cards. But if you want to do the high yield savings, 
that can potentially help as well. So those are going to be the top three banks that I recommend that you can get an average of $50,000 for a new business with no with no documentation. Uh, the cards that I'll show you that I got, I got them with a brand new business that was no more than um, a little a little past 30 days, no more than a little past 30 days. So again, it doesn't have to be a, like structured very well. It doesn't have to be established. You just have to meet the credit uh, the credit requirements, at least a 680. If you can get, you know, above for me, um, I was around a 750 every time I did the applications. So if you could get, you know, right around that 680 plus range, you can go ahead and start applying for these with a brand new business. Uh, right off the bat, you don't have to wait around 50K. Most of these, or if not all of them, have a 0% APR product for a certain amount of time. Take advantage of that. Use it strategically. I wouldn't use, you know, get them all at the same time, but maybe get 50K here, a few more months, get another one and, you know, use it to leverage that capital in order to uh, make some money from whatever new business that you're going to be starting. And again, Next video for people that are looking for a credit card with no personal guarantee, you're definitely going to want to stay tuned for that one for the Sam's Club Business MasterCard. I'll show you exactly what you need to do in order to get that card. Um, and it is very good. I believe it goes up to 25. My first business, I had it with no personal guarantee, got up to around a $20,000 limit. They have a store card and they also have the uh, the business MasterCard. Um, and both of them were very, very useful. And again, I'll go into details about that. So if you've applied for any of these cards, drop a comment below. Uh, if you can drop your data points, let you let me know what your score was. Um, uh, what what was your initial limit? Um, what state were you in? You know, all that information is very useful. It can be a resource for somebody else. Um, and just, you know, let me know exactly what other cards you want to know about what are you interested in what other cards do you want to apply for um, any cards that you recommend I apply for besides the ones that I currently have now and between all of the cards that I do have at this moment I have the uh, Navy Federal business credit card Goldman Sachs business credit card um, the Ameri the two American Express credit cards uh, the Chase and Sam's Club uh, and the Sam's Club card so it's about six, I believe, between all of them. Now I was adding in all my limits and, you know, what I ranged for American Express on the gold. And I have about eighty seven thousand one hundred dollars in, let's say, spending power. So I can spend up to that amount. And, um, you know, that 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 just will if I need it to I have access to it again. We, we treat these like debit cards almost in a sense, because if you don't have the money to cover it, it doesn't make sense unless 0% APR and you have a plan to utilize that capital in order to make money and then you'll have a year to do so. But, you know, just so you know, without even thinking about it, almost $100,000 in credit line, I probably won't be applying for much more now. There may be one other thing I might get and I probably won't apply for anything else for a few months, probably like the next four or five, maybe even six months. Excuse me, I do because I have a plan for the 0% APR cards and I want to save those. Don't want to get them all at the same time. There's no way I'm going to be, there's no way I'm going to use that much. If I can get one with 50K, I'll be good. Might maybe get two because I have a second plan. Or if I increase the limit on my Chase Inc. card, that one has 0% um, APR. Goldman Sachs also has 0% APR. So if not, I might just use those two with the remaining time I have left uh, for, for what I want to do. But yeah, like, share, subscribe. Appreciate you guys. Thank you for watching and you have a wonderful day.